Question 22. Solve the simultaneous equations 3x plus 2y equals 4 and 4x plus 5y equals 17. Uh, this is a tricky question because there's no single way to modify one of these equations. Remember, we're trying to get rid of one of our variables so we can solve it as a single linear equation. There's lots of ways to do this, lots of different methods. I'm going to stick with the method that I'm most comfortable with, and that's trying to get both of these equations to have the same x value is the one I'm going to use. Now, the way I do this is I always label the equations with numbers so I know what I'm doing. I keep it tracked. So, question, equation 1, we've got 3x. Equation 2 has got 4x. I want both of these to have the same number of x's in. I can't just add an x on because that would change the equation. Only thing we can do is to multiply them. So, I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to multiply that by 4. Why am I doing that? Well, if I can get that, multiply that by 4, it gives me 12x. If I multiply that one by 3, I get 12x looking for a common multiple of both of those coefficients of x. So 1 times 4. Uh, so equation 1 times 4, that's going to be 12x plus 4 times this. That's why I write down the terms that times by 4. So remember, 2y times 4 means I've got 8y. 4 times 4 is 16. And I'm actually going to call that one now equation because it's a new equation that I've made. Uh, my calculation step here is to take equation 2 and times it by 3. So, uh, 4x times 3, that's 12x, plus 5y. 5y times 3 is going to give me 15y. 17 times 3 is going to give me 51. I'm going to call that one equation 4 now. So these are the two I'm going to deal with. Now, this is a slightly tricky part. If I added those two together, I'd get 24x. So I'm going to take one of the equations away from the other one to cancel out the x values. These are the ones I'm trying to get rid of now. Now, if I do 3 take away 4, equation 3 take away equation 4, I'm going to end up with 8y take away 15y. It's going to give me negative numbers. So I'm going to do it the other way around just to make sure that I keep my numbers positive when I can. So I'm going to take away the top equation from the bottom equation. 12x take away 12x is nothing. 15y take away 8y, that's 7y. 51 take away 16 is going to give me 35. I've got a nice easy linear equation now. So if 7y is 35, y must equal and that's my first answer. I've got a value for y. This is, next stage is to find out what x is. Now you can pick any of these and we're going to substitute in y into one of those equations. So I might as well pick equation 1. So if I substitute that into equation y, I still have 3x. Instead of plus 2y now, I've got plus 10 because that's 2 lots of 5 and that equals 4. Uh, to solve this, I want to get rid of the 10, so the 3x stays where it is. If I take away 10 here, I have to take away 10 from this side as well, which is minus 6. And again, simple equation now, 3x is, is minus 6, so therefore x must equal minus 2. And there's my second solution. Now, while you could put down your two answers there, a really good idea, especially in exams, is to do the final step, which is just your check step on the equation you've not used. So we've got 4x's. 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. We've got 5y's. So we're going to add 25. And it's supposed to equal 17, does it? Minus 8, add 25. 25 take away 8 is 17. It's a good way for you to know that you've got the answers right. If the answer doesn't work in both equations, we do not have our solution. So x was equal to minus 2. y was equal to positive 5. We've just proven it and checked it ourselves as our 4 marks.